I did talk about this a bit on my main channel video today, following up on the Verapo uh, Veritas news, but I'm going to go into greater detail on my second channel because I will admit YouTube makes it extremely difficult to talk about news issues. In this video, they call it slaughter in Syria. In reality, it is a military show where people were like, I guess, paying tickets to see or something. I don't know if it was paid event, but people were going there to enjoy themselves and watch a display of, uh, of, of military uh, weapons. Gizmodo, the left-leaning Gizmodo, even calls this out. ABC News broadcasts fake Syria bombing video that's actually from a Kentucky military show in 2017. I got a question, man. How did this make it to television? How did it make it to all of these networks like Good Morning America and stuff? Who is your fact checker? Boom, there it is. They don't have any. Someone just says, hey, use this footage. I hope it wasn't on purpose. Let's read the story here from Gizmodo and see exactly what happened. ABC News aired a video on Sunday that host Tom Lamas said depicted a Turkish attack in northern Syria against Kurdish civilians. Turkey is indeed pushing into Syria and slaughtering Kurds along the way. But the video ABC News played last night is from a military gun demonstration in Kentucky that was published to YouTube in 2017. Quote, this video right here, appearing to show Turkey's military bombing Kurd civilians in a Syrian border town, Lamas said on the October 13th broadcast as the video played. But the explosions in the video are identical to the explosion seen in a video titled Knob Creek Night Shoot 2017. Knob Creek Gun Range in the town of West Point, Kentucky hosts a biannual event called the Military Gun Shoot and Military Gun Show, where weapons are fired at night. Members of the public can come and see the show for a fee in April and October. Side by side, it's clear that the videos are the same. Now, when I first heard that ABC News was trying to pass off gun range footage of war footage, I didn't believe it. You know why? I'm not a gun person. So the first thing I thought of was like an indoor gun range with people pointing at targets. And I'm thinking like, there's no way they showed that footage and claimed it was war. But I do know there are, there, there are uh, um, outdoor ranges and two. So I'm like wondering like, what is this going to be like, you know, get set up with a professional table and, and what? And it turns out it's just a gun show. Could you imagine if they show, you know, so, so they do those, uh, um, those uh, fighter jet shows where the, you know, the, where they call the Blue Angels. Man, I'm, I'm really screwing this up, aren't I? Anyway, they do like, you know, air shows. Could you imagine if they showed that and claimed it was war? Let's read on. Both anchor Tom Lamas and foreign correspondent Ian Pinnell can be heard using language to make it clear that ABC News didn't shoot the video and instead acquired it from an outside source. Did somebody pay for this? Here, I'm going to tell you what I think happened. I think somebody went on Twitter, posted the footage, then someone from ABC said, oh, can we use this? And they were probably like, look at this footage from Syria. And the ABC News was like, whoa, and they bought it. I'm willing to bet. Or, or they're like, yeah, feel free to use it, laughing like, what is this? Like, this is how you get your news today? This video obtained by ABC News appears to show the fury of the Turkish attack on the border town of Tal Abyad two nights ago, Penel said during the Sunday broadcast. It's unclear if the video may have been slightly manipulated before it was handed to ABC News, but the unedited video from Kentucky shows people holding up their phones to capture the destruction, while the video broadcast by ABC News appears to have colors that are less saturated than the original. It does look like it was cropped. Now, here's the thing. Who wants to... Okay, do you think someone manipulated the footage and then gave it to them, or do you think ABC did it? I gotta say, ABC, this one's on you. I have no reason to believe there was none other than you who did this. Like, why would we go ahead and assume they acquired it from a third party? Why wouldn't we just assume they took the footage, cropped out the phones and said, oh, look, look at the footage. It could have been one person at the company who was lazy. It could have been somebody who thought it was funny and was quitting. Who knows? But I'm going to put this one squarely on ABC. And there's more updates I want to get into. Let's read. Uh, quote, we've taken down videos that aired on World News Tonight Sunday and Good Morning America this morning that appeared to be from the Syrian border immediately after questions were raised about its accuracy. What, what, what do you mean it appeared to be from the Syrian border? No, it didn't. In no way does it appear to be from the Syrian border. It's just a military show. ABC News regrets the error, an ABC News spokesperson told Gizmodo via email. Video of the broadcast was previously available on YouTube, but was set to private after Gizmodo reached out to ABC News producers. Wow. Gizmodo downloaded a copy of the video before it was removed and has uploaded short clips of both videos so people can see for themselves. Now they couldn't help it. Gizmodo couldn't help but slam Trump supporters. Come on. Yeah, they couldn't help themselves. 
The video's authenticity was first questioned by far-right social media users like Wojciech Powelczyk, who described himself as a video researcher and Trump supporter, as well as the pro-Trump blog NOQ report. Are you kidding, dude? It was pointed out by people who saw an error. Far-right social media users, uh. This ABC News broadcast is obviously bad news for people who value accuracy in journalism, and it's sure to provide even more ammunition to pro-Trump supporters who insist that mainstream news outlets are deliberately trying to deceive people. Most news outlets, believe it or not, are trying to tell the truth and know they'll pay dearly if they lose the trust of their readers and viewers. To be clear, there's no question that Turkish forces are currently slaughtering the Kurds, and countless journalists and civilians on the ground can attest. But this particular video is fake, and it's a shame that it was broadcast. I agree with that assessment, and I will also point out the people in New York sitting in an office getting paid, you know, five figures, mid, mid, five to, mid to high five figures, to regurgitate talking points from Twitter are not journalists, and you should be ashamed of yourselves. The people on the ground in Turkey who are risking their lives to get that information out to us, that's journalism. Okay, the people on the ground in Hong Kong, the people on the ground in Minneapolis, that's journalism. But the journalists who sit in a room reading Twitter all day and writing about woke outrage and blaming Trump supporters for some reason, it was noticed by far right person. Oh, come on, dude. People noticed it was fake news. They called it out. Let's just leave it there. But you know what? Because today is fake news day, I got a bunch of fake news stories for you. And we're going to talk about ABC News. Now, here's the thing. I was originally planning on including this in my main channel segment, highlighting that ABC put out fake video and not to say that, you know, they always put out fake video, but just to point out, you can't blindly trust the press. Let's not forget when ABC had to part ways with investigative reporter Brian Ross. Why? Because he botched a story. How many times have I had to say this over and over again that they put out the news and a day later they they correct it? You know why? That video footage from that gun range, I assure you, people have already held up their phones to their family saying, look at this footage. Those family members are never going to Google search this. They weren't even looking at the story in the first place. That's the problem. Someone sees the video on their Twitter. They open it up and they show it to their friends and family. 20 minutes later, an hour later, who cares how long after they see the correction and go, oh, that was fake. And they're not going to show the correction to their friends and family. They're not going to care. So it happens time and time again. And this is why I say you can't just blindly trust the press. Check this out. Brian Ross, this is from a year ago. The chief investigative correspondent for ABC News is leaving the network seven months after he botched a report involving President Trump and the Russia investigation. A mistake that led to a rebuke from the White House and concern about self-inflicted damage by news organizations already facing scrutiny. You better believe it. So let me ask you something. Is it that uh, the far right is weaponizing the fact that the media gets things wrong? Or is the fact that because the media has increasingly become worse and worse at their job, they don't fact check that you are creating the far right? Perhaps people are becoming Trump supporters because they've seen so much fake news, they don't trust you anymore. There was a point I wanted to say, I wanted to say for this segment uh, that I didn't get to in my main segment because of the, you know, look, this this is probably going to get demonetized and deranked. I get it. Let me say this, though. You have these people in media saying, believe it or not, look at this, believe it or not, you know, the media does, uh, you know, uh, most outlets, believe it or not, are trying to tell the truth. Yeah. That's like a drug dealer being like, dude, trust me, it's totally safe. Would I deceive you? Like, I'm trying to make money here, right? And you're like, oh, it's a good point. Yeah, my dealer's not, doesn't want me to get hurt. He needs my money. (laughs) Yeah, right. No, don't take the word of the media that the media is correct. That's like the police saying, we've investigated ourselves and we found no evidence of wrongdoing. Yeah, please. Sorry, dude. That's why we need an outside source. So when you look at outside sources, they'll actually tell you, go to all sides. They'll show you the bias, allsides.com. They will show you the bias. So I'll, 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 you know, I'll make my final point. I think in my, you know, my opinion, when you have all of this fake news constantly, that you are creating this perception of the far right, you are creating, you're drinking your own Kool-Aid. There are people who oppose you because you pump out fake news and they're not pushing propaganda to make people think the news is fake. No, the media is falling apart. There are people being laid off. We have exposés outlining how the media uses these, these, these systems. It's, it's all about generating traffic. And then we have Project Veritas coming out today, showing us an employee in no uncertain terms. We are tired of talking about Trump. An employee blowing the whistle saying they're biased. It's propaganda. So when you have these employees who can see it plain as day, 
When we sit here online reading the fake news, eventually people say enough. So ABC, look, good on you for correcting. I, I respect that you corrected. The problem is that it happened in the first place. Why? What is wrong with your staff that you are so miserable at your job? It keeps happening. This should not have happened. But what can I say? You know, they, they didn't fact check. They could have checked with a source. They could have reached out to the government. They could have waited. They didn't want to wait. They said, we're going to run this tonight. Did you re reach out to anybody in Turkey, anybody in Syria, anybody in this town? I can't imagine you did. So why should I trust you if literally all you do is regurgitate tweets and YouTube videos? Fake news. Stick around. I got a couple more segments coming up in a few minutes. I will see you shortly.